It was vibrant. There were clothing stores and shoe stores and grocery stores. A lot of kids, a lot of people in the neighborhood had stores and, and everybody's making money. Everything we needed would seem to be right there. And to go through there now and to know how it was then and how it is now is a complete difference. It's like being in a ghost town. In the past, Martindale Brightwood was a blue-collar neighborhood where workers and their families lived close to industrial plants. As the plants closed, many pollutants were left behind, most notably lead. Williams plating, Von Duper came in, and Earls had been there for, for a long time. When uh, Earls left, that's when a lot of us found out about contamination because uh, major tools was coming in to rebuild on that same property. Nobody said anything to us about contaminating anything. And a lot of us was in the dark. We didn't know what was going on. A lot of our, our neighbors started having uh, health issues. With all these companies coming in, leaving, leaving their pollutants, leaving hazardous chemicals, our civil rights are being uh, tested. <laughs> are being violated as well. So in 204, we decided that we would be responsible for trying to help get a quality of life in the neighborhood. And we reached out to the state, or we reached out to city county council people. They had done lead testing in the area for a number of years and I think hadn't been successful in getting American Lead to do a cleanup. American Lead is named after a secondary lead smelter that operated in Martindale Brightwood from 1946 to 1965. That smelter um, reclaimed lead from car batteries. The operations of the smelter contaminated um, a number of residential properties in Martindale Brightwood. American Lead was a big problem. One of our churches wanted to build on some land and they were not able to get the permit to be able to do it because there was quite a bit of soil that had lead. Well, there were two mechanisms. Deposition of airborne particulate matter from the uh, smelter stacks. The second way uh, yards were contaminated was by placement of contaminated fill. We didn't know about uh, lead and things in the ground and and water contaminations back then, but we start learning more and more about it. Somebody told me that there were carcinogens. A lot of the stuff that was left behind were cancer-causing chemicals. And that's when I really got concerned. That's when I really started thinking about all the people in my family that had, uh, you know, passed away with cancer problems. So since then, we've had our children tested in this neighborhood and found that in their blood levels, there was high concentration of lead. Lead is a toxic metal, and it's especially dangerous for young children. Um, lead targets the brain, and young children still have developing brains. Exposure to lead at a young age can cause neurological problems like learning difficulties and behavioral issues. And so EPA sees this as, um, as cleaning, up, cleaning up lead from residential yards as being very important. We talk with the state, we talk with different entities about how to ratify the problems we have. EPA oversaw uh, National Lead Corporation, uh, who was the potentially responsible party, do a cleanup between 2005 and 2007. They cleaned up 225 properties in an area that was determined to have been contaminated by airborne deposition. Some of that land has since needed to be remediated again because they were not able to get deep enough into the soil. In 2016, EPA started a second cleanup of residential yards in Martindale Brightwood. 
Um, between 2016 and 2017, we cleaned up 101 properties that had high levels of lead in the soil. Some of our people have just finished with their second round of remediation. Some of those who did not even get the first remediation are now. And we find that it's very good because they're taking the soil completely out and bringing back sod and sodding them. So, so hopefully our people won't have to deal with those problems again. American lead is in what we consider an environmental justice area. So it is an area that has a disproportionate burden of contaminated properties. It's also an area where the residents um, don't have uh, the economic resources to do clean up th themselves. We were very insistent um, when I find out as the chairperson or our committee, we call. We don't let the thing just die. We, um, I think we might be one of their worst people as far as making sure that our community is noted for uh, getting the service that we need. We developed a really strong relationship with the community, in particular with uh, Mrs. Elizabeth Gore with the Martindale Brightwood Environmental Justice Collaborative. She is a very strong advocate for her community. And if we have to file a lawsuit, so be it, because I don't feel that our community should be the dumping grounds of any companies that want to just come in and leave it in an African-American community. Our people need a quality of life, and we're gonna keep fighting until we get it.